heavy duty electrical back end in the shadow of I-95 and the latest Nevi stations with Charge Point Express Plus here in Rhode Island. Welcome back to Plug and Play V. I'm Steve, and in this video, we'll be looking at the third Nevi update for July 2024. Who has added stations? What are we looking at in terms of new awards for different charging stations across the country? We're ready to move a few states into new columns. So let's get into where the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure, or Nevi for short, where that program stands in July 2024. So having laid out the kind of groundwork for what the program is and where people are in the first two updates, which I will link down in the video description and comments, we have a baseline for who is where on different parts of this process. You have those states that are pre-RFP or pre-solicitation, which means they really haven't got much further than uh, spinning up a NEVI website, having a plan in place that has been approved by the federal government, needing to move now from that first stage of here is a plan to actually soliciting applications and award money to those who apply. Some states have uh, announced round one awards already. So you've got a couple of leaders in the likes of Ohio and Pennsylvania. Then we've got construction and actual stations in the ground. And we have progress on most of those from uh, the June update that we did last month. So in terms of that pre-RFP group, we do still have 14 states who haven't made it to the solicitation phase yet. It's worth noting that uh, in some cases, you've got the likes of Vermont who haven't actually solicited bids, but do have a station live because they've managed to bake in existing stations, upgrade them to NEVI standards and get them on the board. So there are some vagaries, but for the most part, you've got about 14 states that were there already. So let me just read them out quick again. You have uh, Washington, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Nevada, Nevada, South Dakota, Nebraska, Missouri, Louisiana, Mississippi, West Virginia, South Carolina, New Jersey, and of course, Florida. So that's the 14 states that have uh, been pre-RFP so far, no solicitations, and are either dragging their heels intentionally or have a very complicated way to uh, getting to those RFPs and uh, still, either way, haven't made the progress at this point. Then moving on to the states that are in their solicitation phase, we've been able to bump a few states out of that because they've moved on to the award stage, which is good. Obviously want to see some of those 14 states that we mentioned before move into the solicitation phase so that they're moving along and we can see progress. But at the time of recording, the states that are still in the process of soliciting are California, Oregon, Arizona, North Dakota, Iowa, Illinois, Alabama, North Carolina, Delaware, Connecticut, Massachusetts. So the rest of those states are either in the awards phase or some way after that into construction and maybe even opening stations. So the two new states that have moved on and actually announced locations or round one NEVI funding were Maryland and Minnesota. Maryland announced 23 sites and Minnesota announced 13 sites. So what I'd like to do here is, because we have a couple that we can really dig into, maybe take a look at some of the sites that they've put on board here and see where they've decided to cover the map. So let's go to Minnesota first, where we spent the 2023 summer vacation up at Voyagers National Park and some interesting locations there that are very close to our travels, uh, notably in Moose Lake, where we had to wait uh, at least a good uh, hour or so for a single CPE 250, because it's the last one on the way up to the North Shore of Minnesota. A lot of slow charges on ZephNet further up in the 50 kilowatt range, but uh, not much to speak of in the way of fast charging over 100 kilowatts and certainly uh, very rarely multiple stalls. So that's one of these areas where Nevi is going to start filling some gaps here with uh, at least four new stalls of 150 kilowatts or more up in Moose Lake. And that's going to the Quick Trip uh, brand of convenience stores and gas stations, which did win three of the awards in Minnesota's first round. Another winner was Circle K, who got five of the awards, and uh, they have one in Pine City, which is actually already a site, two ABB 180 kilowatt units, which can be split and simultaneous charge, but that's going to be down to 90 kilowatts, which would be below the NEVI requirements. So it'll be interesting to see what they do there. Circle K has been pretty good at future-proofing their sites, and they have done some larger installs, most notably recently in Wilson, North Carolina, which you can uh, check out on Walter at the Network Architects channel. That was a big site uh, in conjunction with Tesla. So maybe they're looking, because this is quite a good travel route up to the North Shore, as I say, maybe they're looking to do a bit of work there and really upgrade that station. 
And moving on to Marilyn's awards for the round one. Here's a map of where these will be. There's 23 of them, so not uh, so easy to go through each individual one and make some assessments. But you can see Wawa coming into the frame here, some uh, new names. But it's also interesting to look at the round one timeline that Marilyn put up. Every state has its own Nevi website. Some are better than others, as we'll get onto with Florida and Wyoming. But uh, when it comes to the round one for Marilyn, they had their request for proposals released in mid-January of 2024 then the next deadline was a pre-proposal conference mid-february of this year then proposals were due on april 10th the proposals were reviewed through april uh, may and june and then we've just had the conditional awards announced for the round one locations in july so you can see there that six month kind of timeline not all states are going that quickly and obviously if they haven't released the rfp yet that's pushing the application process into 2025 now that we're in the second half of 2024 and then you look beyond that and how long it takes if it's another year you're starting to get these laggard sites not even into the award stages until uh, next year potentially and then moving into 2026 for installs if they drag their feet on that so if you take a look at the list you've got folks like pilot travel centers very familiar and moving pretty quickly to make the pilot flying j travel network with ev go very expansive and reliable you've got francis energy which is uh, certainly out there a lot but uh, has only got a couple of nevi stations active in Ohio so far but they did have five Maryland awards so they'll certainly be folks we'll be looking at then another name that uh, hasn't appeared on so many other lists but is certainly in this region being based out of Pennsylvania and having that mid-Atlantic market in its sights is Wawa so if you're a Tesla driver you're probably pretty familiar with Wawa on the east coast because they're at a lot of station there are a couple of Tesla awards in there that are in conjunction with Wawa so that's going to be one of these magic dog v4 sites most likely that Wawa has one in its own right so you have to assume there they're going with somebody else otherwise Tesla would be the the winner here unless they've just decided to apply directly and then give Tesla the uh, contract to actually put the stuff in and then a couple of smaller individual wins uh, Gridwell TV they got a couple at uh, retail outlets in Ocean City and in Lexington Park Maryland and again this is one of these where I'd really like like to dig in a lot deeper these are supposed to be quick updates so not too much time to look at every individual company but uh, then you can also take out the name Coolum which is uh, one that Walter has visited over in North Carolina I believe or certainly in his region so uh, I'll link to that video down in the comments as well but some of these newer names, you know, Gridwell TV with a couple, Coolum, there's uh, one called Electrostop at a place that looks like a retail plaza. So um, a mix of kind of the same thing, gas and convenience stores and then retail outlets, depending on who the awardee is. As you can see from the map there, a lot of the main routes around that Baltimore and heading over to the west. Uh, one area that isn't covered so well is the Delmarva Peninsula, where you go through Delaware and then come back into Maryland and down into Virginia. So that has that kind of uh, beach community it's um, a little bit disappointed perhaps that there's not more to the north of the sites that they did put on the map here at ocean city and salisbury but we have to take this round by round that kind of points to the fact that nevi even with 23 sites can't still fully build out a state uh, yet unless it really is a small state as we'll get on to next And then finally we get to the business end which is uh, actual spades in the ground and sites that are being constructed and some that have even opened. So the biggest news I guess that we have is that uh, Rhode Island has had a lot of activity recently. We touched on that in the last video but uh, the sites weren't open. Uh, in the last couple of weeks they have opened their two park and ride sites, one in Warwick close to Providence and another down in Hopkinton, Ashaway area. So those actually by virtue of uh, Rhode Island being pretty small state and not having a whole lot of corridors to fill mean that Rhode Island is now fully built out and it can start to transfer the funds that it would have spent on travel corridors to other areas so we'll see where it goes there are certainly some areas of Rhode Island that do need some help maybe they'll get community charging maybe they'll look at areas in Providence where they really need to start fueling the ride chair drivers but I did actually get to visit the park and ride site so let's uh, jump over there now for a quick look at what this site does well and some of the oddities that uh, are cropping up in its first couple of weeks of operation okay so just to emphasize how well placed it is it is right in the middle of the off ramps for i-95 you do have to come at it from the uh, western side of the junction but no big deal we have uh, a bolt ev a hyundai onyx 6 and a tesla model y all parked in the three spaces i'm taking up the fourth here so let's plug in and see if we can get it going So 
love to see in the sun, but waiting for EV. Charging within 25 seconds, 34%, 30 kilowatts, 50 kilowatts, 80, past the 100, got 320 capable total, so will we jump past the 150, yes, Bolt is charging at <laughs> 10 kilowatts and 97%, so 36 hours remaining, it says. Okay, so already some interesting shenanigans, and we'll get into why. That is a lot more likely to happen at this station than uh, many of the other Nevi sites. But uh, pretty solid still. It's got a lot of available power because the bolt is pulling only 10 kilowatts. And uh, as I say, 97% going to 100. So this is what we'll get onto with the, uh, the issues of the, the way they've set this up here but we're at uh, nearly peak power there, so not going to complain. 230 kilowatts, almost, better part of, is solid. And uh, let's get on to where this site is and what people are doing with it. Okay, so I'm kind of glad we came here today, or at least got this scenario, because uh, the chap next to me on the left here is in a Bolt EV, which could, you know, justifiably be on this if everything was uh, full, but it's clear at 98%. Uh, I'm pretty sure he was here as I first pulled through, just to take a look at how the site was set up, when there was a Kia EV6 on one of the Nevi stations, and the Bolt EV on the other one. Pretty sure that was this fella, and he's now at 98%, pulling uh, less than 10 kilowatts now. So you can see that kind of... Someone going to 100% uh, you might ask why would someone spend that time well I'm not sure what the situation is here with uh, the driver individually but uh, they've got free charging here it has been all the time we've had the CPE 250s at these park and ride locations for a good while now we used these way back in 2020 on road trips down to New York City so that's always been a case, but obviously that's a limited power. There's not a whole lot of, uh, you know, draw for those, at least other than people uh, wanting to stop off and top up. So you have a lot of equipment here that can do high power and uh, it's free to use at the time of recording. That's uh, the middle of July here as these have opened. So that could change, uh, but it has been the case, as I say, with these CP 250s that they've been free for several years now. So if that remains the case with these Nevi stations, then you're going to have this kind of situation where where uh, people are going to camp, especially this one, it's kind of Metro Providence, so a lot of potential rideshare use, people uh, jumping up and down I-95, and you've got the free problem of now campers, so a 320 kilowatt capable station, or shared power of 160 kilowatts, is going to be limited to someone using it for 5, 10 kilowatts. So they see Uber in the... Um window written I've just seen that so this is uh, an uber just using it as you would expect when a free charger going to 100% and uh, there's a little committee over there of folks trying to figure it out so no one's waiting as you can see and there are actually as we'll take a look a couple of um, CPE 250s over in the distance but this is uh, kind of one of those scenarios where there's some interesting uh, use cases uh, developing and people are definitely going to flock here I might actually jump off so that we're not too high into the pack so that I can go and look at the CPE 250s. So free, nine minutes, almost 30 kilowatt hours. about to complete at uh, 100% <laughs> and on to uh, 7 kilowatts at the time of recording so and he's trying to help out the lady there so some interesting uh, stuff going on but let's jump over and see if the CPE 250 uh, does us any favours. So you've got the mix here, you've got Rhode Island plates, Subaru Solterra just using the park and ride, you've got six J1772 plugs which to my mind make the most sense for a park and ride. So all of these available to folks just parking up. 
and moving on. Then you've got the CPE250s that were in here before for a good while. Uh, I thought they were 62.5 kilowatts. It seems like they could be 125 kilowatts. That's got the Tesla. Looks like he's getting a successful charge. And the Nissan Leaf on the other one. So that's the Nevi portion of it. Four ports, 160 kilowatts each if uh, all in use, or up to 320 on each individual dispenser. If not, the existing CPE250s with uh, the Chatamo plug available there, and then your extra six J1772 ports for the long stay dwell times. So as you can see there, free charging already a bit of a burden on this uh, new Nevi site. I'm sure there'll be a lot of animated comments about that because it's probably not a good idea. When it was the CPE 250s at 62.5 kilowatts each, uh, obviously that was still clogged up, but there's people, you know, maybe avoiding those charges because they aren't the fastest. Now you have full, fully equipped, uh, like hardware that will pretty much max out every EV on the market, or at least most, you know, most that people are driving, and uh, not going to be fully utilized or well utilized if there are rideshare drivers sitting on it, charging up in that kind of low double digit kilowatts. Um, it's just really going to gum up the works. So I'm hoping that that's just uh, them commissioning it and following the previous um, pricing, and that they'll be able to plug in some pricing soon, so that at least on the fast charges, the 320 kilowatt stations that are Nevi funded those can actually bring them in some money, makes people think twice before they plug in and certainly it makes them move on before just waiting there until the car is fully charged, just not how we want to see these stations used. In any case, they are now on the board and that is 15 federally funded stations that are open around the country across eight different states. So that leaves out the construction phase because it is quite hard to tell what uh, is under construction unless we have uh, reports on plug share or states actively trumpeting some of their groundbreaking then we don't know whether spades are in the ground whether things are happening. On the subject of press releases we do know that uh, as of February, mid-February there was a groundbreaking for the Circle K in Richmond, Kentucky which is where uh, the governor Andy Bashir helped break ground and made a big uh, to-do about that site being the first Nevi site in Kentucky Kentucky. Unfortunately, coming up on six months later, that site still isn't activated. The units are in the ground, so that's good. They certainly have turned around most of the construction work, so it should be any day now. But that's one that I was hoping would be on the list by now. It moves Kentucky from construction state to a state with stations open. It's just one of those that is an interesting juxtaposition with about five miles down the road, there's a Mercedes-Benz high-power charger site that uh, was started construction in December, so not that long before before the Circle K site and then was open charging vehicles by the 1st of March and has since served people all summer. At the same site there is a Tesla supercharger. So you can see although there is public funding going to a site there, perhaps in some ways some of the uh, requirements and stipulations of Nevi have possibly slowed that down. We know Circle K aren't laggards when it comes to installing their own stuff, so maybe they've hit some uh, bureaucracy and red tape there which would be the other side of the Nevi program potentially. And in the meantime private funds getting it done just down the road to serve drivers on that stretch. So that's where we are with Nevi in July 2024. 15 stations open across eight states, one state now fully built out, albeit tiny Rhode Island. A good healthy chunk of states having awarded contracts and waiting for what is coming up on close to 600 stations now awarded waiting to see when those will start to be under construction. Ohio is still leading the pack with activations and Francis Energy and Tesla at the top of those lists of awardees waiting to install stations. But let me know what you think. How's it looking in your state? What are you seeing? Are you just frustrated with the whole process? And uh, in the sense of public versus private, do you think as that kind of Richmond area in Kentucky shows that maybe private is just the way to go? Lots of interesting vagaries and we'll get into another update number four as we head into August but let us know what you think at the moment how it's looking around you and what you'd like to see in the next update thanks for watching and see you in the next one cheers <laughs>